Hey, welcome back to Curiosity Hub, I'm Ollie Hubbard. So you know in Avatar when Grace, the head scientist, says this? What we think we know is that there's some kind of electrochemical communication between the roots of the trees. Well, hold up Pandora, because Earth has that as well. So mostly plants aren't connected directly, plant to plant, but they are connected through a fungal network. And now, fungi are not plants. They're completely separate kingdoms, so they're as different as animals are to plants. But the first question is, why would even a single tree want to be connected to fungi? Well, plants need nutrients from the soil, stuff like potassium, nitrogen and phosphorus, and other trace elements. But the only problem is, all of those elements are extremely spread out in the soil, and so it would take the plant heaps of energy to have to search that whole volume. But fungi love to spread out. They've got little hair like hyphae, which just go everywhere. But the only problem for the fungus is that it's underground and can't photosynthesize. And so the plant trades about 10 to 30% of its carbohydrate food in return for the nutrients found by the fungus. And so it's a symbiotic relationship. And so we call that mycorrhiza. And that's just from the Greek mycos meaning fungus and rhiza meaning root. And we think about 80 to 90 percent of plants are in this symbiotic relationship. The second question is how the heck do the roots and the fungi even connect up? Well among many ways there are two main types and the first is arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. So that's the one in pink. So here the fungi literally penetrates into the root cells. But the second type is ectomycorrhizal fungi. And that's pretty self-explanatory because ecto comes from the Greek ektos. So it's literally external fungus root. And as you can see in blue, that's exactly what's happening. The fungi grows around the root tip cause, and it's, we call it the mantle, but then it even grows in around the root cells and we call those heart ignets. And it's pretty easy to see from that as well how the fungus can prevent the root from getting infected by other pathogens. Okay, so now let's move beyond the one individual plant. So basically one fungus can be connected to multiple plants and one plant can be connected to multiple fungi. And so that creates a complex network and it allows transport from one plant to another through the fungal network. We think that this transport is facilitated by the system wanting to be in equilibrium. So if you imagine that there's a cave and there's a little plant in the shade of the cave and then there's another plant over here in full sun. This plant will be high in carbon because it can photosynthesize in the full sun. So it's got a lot and then the plant over here is really low in carbon. It doesn't have very much. So we call this plant the source and this plant the sink. And then the carbon will move through the fungal network from the source to the sink. And the same thing happens with nitrogen. If you fertilize this plant and it has a ton of nitrogen and you don't fertilize this plant and it doesn't have very much, the nitrogen will move from the source to the sink. But what if neither plant has much nitrogen? Well, there's a crazy fungi called the Lasseria bicolor, and it forms mycorrhizal networks with pines, and it can actually release a deadly toxin into the soil, which kills these tiny little springtails, and they'll decompose and release the nitrogen locked up in their bodies to the plants so that they can use it. So sometimes the fungi can take matters into its own hands. But as well as nitrogen and carbon, uh, the fungal network can also be used to transport things like water, nutrients, minerals, even stress chemicals, um, but also sometimes harmful things like herbicides. An amazing result of all of this was seen by some Swiss researchers who were walking along and saw a group of pine trees. So they were all covered in green needles and looked really nice and healthy. But when they looked inside some of them, some of them hadn't grown any new growth rings for over 30 years. But yet these seemingly dead trees were covered in green needles. And it turns out they were being kept on life support by their neighbours. Everything they needed was being pumped to them through the fungal network. 
but it's actually not just trees or plants of the same species or lineage which are connected through mycorrhizal networks because the system is far more resilient when each plant is connected to multiple types of fungi and each fungus is connected to multiple types of plants because that means if conditions change and one species gets wiped out then the network as a whole will survive. Although that doesn't mean there isn't just a little bit of favoritism going on. Researchers have found that there's much greater networking, micronutrient transfer, and twice as much carbon transfer between older Douglas firs and trees closely related to them when compared to older Douglas firs and strangers. And we don't really know why. It's a bit of a mystery how they do this. One theory is that it's got to do with the genetic information, which is part of what comes out of the tree's roots. But another theory is that the fungus needs specific enzymes in order to overcome the defensive mechanisms of the tree roots, and that related trees would have similar defense mechanisms and therefore require similar enzymes. So it just uses less energy. The fungus uses less energy to overcome related trees. And so the networking gets the thickest between them. But it's still pretty much a mystery. Even with this favoritism though, interspecies connections are the norm. So Douglas firs have been found connected to paper birch trees underground through the mycorrhizal network. And that's because one is evergreen and the other is deciduous. And so they can trade carbon seasonally. They swap between who is the source and who is the sink. And both trees have been found to be more productive and more disease resistant when they're connected compared to when they're grown just alone with their own species. And that's a pretty good example of why species who seem to be competitors are actually cooperating underground because the group is more resilient than the individual. And that's also why these networks are such good examples of complex systems. Although there are points of vulnerability. So Susan Simard has found that there are things called mother trees or hub trees. And these are the oldest and largest trees in the network. And because of that, they're also the most interconnected and integral members of it. The tree and fungal network is often compared to a similar complex system, the internet. And so you could think of the mother trees like web servers. You could still take a few out, but things will start to fall apart pretty quickly, or at least a lot faster than if you were just removing end users. So the next time you see Avatar, just know that the interconnected forest is actually a real thing. Although on Pandora, it's on a planet-wide scale. So it's just a little bit bigger. But I think they actually took this into account because that would mean that the fungal network would have to be a lot bigger. And mushrooms are just the fruiting bodies of underground fungi. And, I mean, check out the size of these mushrooms. And look at this one, this one's huge. But for real, next time you're walking through the forest, just think about the amazing network right below your feet. It really is pretty mind-blowing. And if you want to learn more about all of this, the links are down in the description. So go crazy with that. And if you want to learn about plant mimicry, that's coming up next week. So subscribe if you want to catch that. Uh, but also just subscribe to join this community. I mean, I really appreciate you guys who are tuning in each week to learn and hopefully just enjoy all of this. And also, I want to hear your best mushroom or fungi joke. So comment down below and vote because the top one will be in next week's video. So get inspired. But um, that's about it. So have a good one and I'll see you next week. Thanks heaps. So a mushroom walks into a bar and the barman says, sorry, we don't serve mushrooms here. And the fungus said, ah, damn it. Ah. <laughs>